morning friends welcome back to my kitchen again it's all about food and I'm happy to share with you some tips on baking the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God it is the same scripture in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 I don't know if you've ever asked yourself what the scripture really means by comparing uh, or rather by saying man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Personally what I get from the scripture is that what food is to the body Christ must be to the soul. You cannot benefit from the food you eat, from the recipes we do here, you cannot benefit from them by merely looking at them and having them in the house. You can only benefit from food by eating it, chewing it, having it being assimilated in your body, and thus you can benefit from food. The same way, Christ cannot be of benefit to us unless we eat him and drink him. The scriptures say that the word of God or the scriptures rather testify of Christ and so we are to eat Christ. A typical example is from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. The Bible says thy words were found and I did eat them and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Here we find Jeremiah did eat the word of God. And so us too, we can eat the word of God. We can assimilate it that it may be for our benefit. The same way we do with food. So friends, Christ can only benefit us if we receive him as our personal savior, not with a mere theoretical knowledge, but with a practical and a personal experience with him. God bless you. In the preparation of pastries, we have breads, we have cakes, we have crackers, we have muffins, we have cookies, waffles, and lots of varieties. In breads, we have flat breads and raised breads. And many times here is where the problem comes in. Some people prefer flat breads. Some people prefer raised breads. And for the raising agents, the common ones are yeast, baking powder, baking soda. And concerning these raising agents, I wish to take you through a book here which really explains um, typically in detail um, how you can use some of these um, raising agents with safety and some of the side effects of using others. So this book is called Whole Foods for Whole People by Lucy Fala. Under Irritating Substances Item number five, baking soda and baking powders. It is written that baking soda and most baking powders either harm nutrients in the food or leave irritating residues in the system. Yeast raised breads are healthful provided that the bread is well baked and then not consumed until the second or third day. Fresh yeast germs retard digestion and harm some of the B vitamin content of the product. Aluminium found in some baking powders, antacids, some deodorants, artificial flavorings, and especially in aluminium canned soft drinks may be a cause of Alzheimer's disease, so we will do well to avoid these products. In page 34 of the same book, under special terms and ingredients, energy baking powder, it is written 
We thought there was no safe baking powder until we discovered this one. It is simply citric acid and calcium carbonate, the form that doctors often give for calcium supplements. We recommend that it be used only occasionally, so there is no danger of taking in too much calcium. In page 41 of the same book, under raised bread, it is written that the staff of life is bread, our most important food. Breads are of two types, raised or light breads and unleavened breads. We will present raised breads, leavened with yeast or energy baking powder, calcium and nitric acid, as baking soda and regular baking powders either leave irritating residues in the food or destroy some of the vitamins. The volatile substances left in yeast breads from the growth process of the yeast evaporate within one to three days. The conditioning of the crumb also proceeds during this time, making the bread more digestible and easier to cut. As you have seen, regular baking soda and baking powder, they irritate the system. Many times there is experiences of bloating. Also, they, they cause the depletion of certain vitamins, vitamin Bs, B1, B2, the volatile vitamins. Also, if yeast is not properly cooked and left to cool to allow the volatile substances to evaporate, and also to allow it to dry completely, there is a risk of yeast infection such as candidiasis, other infect fungal infections which affect children in the scalp of their hair. Regular use of foods baked in baking powders and baking soda have been linked to issues of H. pylori and ulcers as well. And so if we are to use yeast in our baking, we are to eat the bread after one to three days of baking. If we are to use baking powder, the energy is most preferable because from research, it does not contribute to depletion of so many vitamins from the system and it is not irritative. There are people who are okay with gluten flours and there are people who are gluten intolerant. They are sensitive to gluten and there are lots of varieties of flours which are gluten free from corn flour to soy flour to almond flour to cassava flour we have sweet potato flour, we have quinoa flour, we have besan or chickpea or gram flour. There is coconut flour, there is rice flour, there is gluten-free oat flour, there is millet flour, lots of varieties of gluten-free flours. Of course, there is a wide range of flours to use. And if you're okay with the wheat flour, it's good to use it. There is buckwheat, there is rye, which have gluten. And so it's okay to use them if you're okay with gluten. Friends, I'm so much eager to listen to your feedback, to get to know what your thought is concerning the raised breads and the raising agents. Feel free, ensure you observe community guidelines. If you like this video, remember to give it a like. And for more videos um, concerning baking and whole foods for whole people, remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye.